So, another reason I haven't been buying records a whole lot is because I've kind of been pushed beyond the point of caring enough, really. Because records are just getting more and more expensive for the same thing. I mean, they're not getting better. You aren't getting more. You're just paying more. Uh, and in many cases, they're getting worse. Uh, quality control has definitely gone down as production has gone way up. And there are a couple of new plants and new presses are being acquired. Uh, I think even attempted to be built. But uh, there's just so much production and it's getting pretty frustrating you know a record that should be 20 22 maybe 25 at the very most and it has to be worth it is now 30 to 35 and uh, i i just can't and i won't be doing that anymore you have to you have to draw the line at some point, and I have I have decided to draw the line. Uh, case in point, the most recent one is the latest uh, Radiohead album, "A Moon Shaped Pool," which is a great record. Uh, definitely some elements of older Radiohead with a, some acoustic guitar, and uh, it's very mm, it's pretty mellow. It's definitely not. Uh, the vibe of the last two records. But it is good. Uh, a lot of string arrangements, very cinematic vibe. Makes sense since Johnny Greenwood has done a lot of sound tracks in the last 10 years or so. So this is put out by XL. Normally XL is pretty good about uh, pricing and value. Although they have tended to use uh, plants that I'm not a fan of, including United. Uh, so this was released on black and white pressings. Uh, the white, I believe, is meant for independent record stores. And there's 9,000 of those. So you know this is a large pressing. They had to use two plants, in fact. Optimal in Germany and Rainbow in the U.S., so most of the copies you're going to find in the U.S. are pressed at Rainbow. There's been a lot of outcry about quality control because there's been several pressings on both sides uh, that have been quite noisy. Uh, ticks and pops and crackles beyond the norm, you know, what you should expect on a record. A lot of disappointment there. And standard price is 30 bucks. Now this is a gatefold, a nice one at that. There is some foil on the, the name and title of the record down here. Some people thought a lot of this metallic imagery would be foil as well, but it's not. It has printed inner sleeves, which is nice. Uh, this is on black vinyl. Um, I actually had it noticed before, but the inside of the sleeve, if you can see, maybe a little bit, is printed. I didn't notice that. That's pretty cool. So yes, it's a nice package. But is it worth $30? Is it worth $30 to pay for an album? Would you pay $30 for a CD? I don't think so. And this master, I don't believe, is really much if at all different than the digital master used for the CD and the 24-bit download. It's a pretty compressed record. The dynamic range is not very big even though it should be, and it would, would be more effective on an album like this. Uh, there's a lot of room for dynamic range in the, these songs, but it's just not there. So my copy was definitely not as bad as I had read about or I'd heard samples of. There was one spot that was a, a bit scratched, I guess, and it ticked for four or five revolutions. Fortunately, it was in a part where what was happening wasn't terribly interesting. It was the very beginning of the song. And most of the surface noise 
was at the beginning of each side. And by the end, it was pretty quiet. I did run it through the, the VPI before listening to it, so whatever is there is probably going to be there. Um, if I had paid $30 for it, I would probably return it and try to get a better one. Uh, but somehow, well, I should say I had decided that I was just not going to get this on vinyl. It wasn't worth 30 bucks. Um, this album, two, three years ago, would not have been $30, I don't believe. I think it would have been 22 23 I realize we're talking $7, but that's $7. You can buy a couple more used records for that. You can almost buy this on CD for that, which is what I did. I bought it for, on CD for 9 bucks. I figured the difference is not going to be that great. Yes, I want the album, but on principle, I'm not going to spend 30 bucks. So I got the CD. Uh, and then I went to a record store that I hadn't been to for some time. Uh, which reminds me, there's a couple more records that I haven't shown. Um, it's in a suburb, and I just... It, I used to live closer to it, and I went there now and again, but I just haven't been. It's just uh, definitely out of the way now. But uh, I used to find good stuff there, in the like the recently arrived used stuff, and they would have <laughs> they would have clearance sections. It was a pretty pretty good store. Um, I think especially because it, it is out of the way. It's it's not in Portland, uh, so it's not as picked over and some stuff that definitely would be snatched up in a Portland record store by somebody who knew what it was out there it might sit around for a bit longer so I just felt like going there and I did and uh, to my surprise they had it for $22 $21.95 which was also surprising because it's part of a chain and there's two stores in Portland proper, and I had seen uh, uh, a paper advertisement that said it was twenty five ninety five for the LP. I was like, oh, it's close, but still not good enough. They had it for twenty one ninety five. I was like, that that's I'll go for that. Uh, so I did. So I did end up getting it on vinyl for twenty two dollars, and uh, I still haven't opened the CD, but I think I'll probably just keep that anyway. Um, I do have the last two on CD as well. And I should, uh, also, because I decided that I'm not going to, I'm going to be much more decisive about what I get on vinyl, what's worth paying for. Uh, so I got myself a very decent CD player. I'd read up on it for a while. I, I looked at universal players that would play, you know, super audio CDs and DVD audio, and I've, I scoured Goodwills, and I picked up a couple of decks, and none of them really worked out. So I decided I would just get this new one, one that is still in production by Ankyo. And almost every review that I had read about it was glowing. It said, for a CD player, and for a CD player of this price, it sounds really good. Uh, so I went ahead and got it, and I'll insert a little video snippet of it here. I figured if I'm going to listen to CDs, I definitely want, you know, the best sound I can get out of them. So I invested in a, in a decent deck. I still have you know, several hundred CDs. And I figure, you know, in this day and age, the difference is not going to, this is just not going to be that great between a CD and that same album on vinyl. Largely, it's going to, it's going to be the same source. And you're just getting that filter of analog, of, of the material of vinyl, which I do love. I love the aesthetic, you know, for all the reasons people love vinyl, I do. But if I can, been, I can spend $10 on a CD or 20 or 25 or 30 on a record, at this point, I'm going to lean more towards the reasonable option of a CD. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, 
Um, the record store was also giving out this little promotional pamphlet. It's kind of a funny poem of sorts. So what it comes down to, um, it's by Stanley Donwood who did the artwork and the artwork for, uh, the King of Limbs, at least that, that I know of. And, uh, it's called, uh, how to create your own, a moon shaped pool artwork in 66 easy to follow steps, which is definitely a bit of a joke because it's, it goes through the process of his feelings of creating something like this. And uh, I won't read the whole thing, but uh, Google that, and you can probably read it. It's a nice little bit of extra. So, you know, the album is good. Um, glad I found it for that price. Uh, I do wish it was pressed somewhere else besides Rainbow. They're pretty much on par with United as far as uh, quality of material. Uh, but what can you do? Buy at your own risk, I would say. Uh, and buy from somewhere where you know you can return if you feel you sh you need to. Because uh, it might not be that great. And one more, and I got this a while back. When did this come out? April, I think. Uh, this is a, another posthumous release from Jeff Buckley, one of my all-time favorites. And I didn't know about these recording sessions before. Apparently they were a bit of a myth. Uh, it's a collection of mostly covers that he recorded as basically a template for what he was going to do on a record for Columbia. Uh, they paid for him to just go to this studio and uh, just record just him and a guitar, uh, play these songs, and it was just kind of meant to be an example, I guess, somewhat of a demo. Uh, so I believe it's all just straight to the, uh, the DAT machine from the, his vocal and guitar mics. And um, I believe what I read was that just that source was put out. It was, you know, these songs were collected from, I'm sure, several hours of recordings compiled. And uh, I, I can tell that they, it's really not mastered in the traditional sense. There's not, uh, I don't sense any compression. I don't, uh, I, I think there's not even much equalization. There's some, like thumps, some extraneous noises that have a lot of low end. Uh, if I remember correctly, I, I've listened to this a couple times, but it's been a bit. But I remember thinking, oh, that if I was mastering this, I would have put some sort of filter for the lowest frequencies, especially on that, that part. Um, but I actually looked at the waveforms and everything, and uh, it don't. All I can tell is that there was a limiter uh, at, you know, at the very peak to keep it from clipping, which hardly ever happens, but um, it's very dynamic. Uh, it's very quiet to, you know, quite loud. So this is all to say that it, w it couldn't have been very expensive to make this thing for Columbia. They are, it was just recordings they had in a vault. Uh, all they had to do was pick out the songs, sequence it, and, and put it out there. Not much expense to make this. But for some reason, well, the only reason is money. Uh, the standard price I'm seeing is about $35. 32 to 36 37 Which is ridiculous. It is truly ridiculous. Uh, it's pressed at MPO in France, which is a fairly good pressing plant in my opinion. So it does sound pretty good. Uh, it is a gatefold. Uh, but th there's really nothing, you know, deluxe or fancy or special in particular about this. 
this record should be 20 bucks, 22 bucks. I couldn't believe it when it was so damn expensive. But of course it's Jeff Buckley, and of course someone like me really wants it, and I, of course I want it on vinyl, but I, luckily one of my local stores had it on sale, but the sale price was like 28 So, is it worth $28 to have it on vinyl? When it comes right down to it, not really. Um, and see, that's, that's just where I am. Is it worth it? And I keep having to ask myself that. Um, unfortunately, it, it, more frequently the answer is no, it's just not worth it. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with the, the state of the music industry when it comes to vinyl. Because you can't keep hiking up prices for something that just shouldn't be that expensive. It's just more expensive because people are buying this stuff and that's how they see a way to make money. And, you know, when they're constantly not making as much as they used to, streaming services and downloads and whatnot. But it would make sense to me that if something is more reasonably priced, it's more likely to sell us. You know, case in point, I'm not going to spend 30 or $35 on one record. I would rather spend $35 on two records. I don't know. It's, uh, it's an interesting state. I'll see what happens. I'm definitely going to be much more picky and cheesy about what I get on vinyl. So I remember there was a, a few more records that I'd gotten recently, so I might as well show them now. Uh, this I just got just yesterday. Uh, this is the latest from Mogwai. This is called Atomic, and it is a soundtrack to a film of that name, which uh, I don't know too much about, actually. Um, but uh, I do love Mogwai, and I knew this was coming out, and uh, first instinct was... I don't, I don't really need to get that on vinyl, do I? Uh, you know, I, I think I've downloaded the soundtrack stuff they've done in the past, and it's fine. Uh, it's usually, you know, a, a bit different, as it should be, than a Mogwai music proper. This definitely serves as a Mogwai album on its own. It is more synth-heavy. Uh, and uh, kind of slower, but uh, definitely sounds like Mogwai. And there's a few songs that definitely could just be straight up on a normal Mogwai album. And but you know, as I was buying it, I was like, I don't, I don't know if I need to do this. I struggled with it. I went through with it. Uh, it is a nice package. Uh, it's UV spot on. The orange here, as well as the inside, which is quite nice. And it's a thick jacket. I love that. And it is a double LP. Uh, but, you know, case in point, this I don't think I've seen in a store for more than 23. 22, 23. That's, that seems pretty fair. And this is a fairly nice package. So... It can be done. Um, this, the, the pressing isn't super nice. Uh, I couldn't, it wasn't totally obvious to me where it was pressed, but I think it might be rainbow as well. And uh, there was some non-fill in the first track, which was disappointing. Uh, the sound of that is just nails on a chalkboard, really. I kind of describe it as like a glitchy sound, sometimes like a tearing sound. And uh, it's not pleasant. Uh, it happened probably four or five times in the uh, on the first track. I didn't really hear it again, which was good. Um, the rest of it was fairly quiet, actually. But just that part alone kind of made me like, huh, see? I mean, there's always, typically there's always something. It's not 
a question anymore of is there going to be a problem or a defect? It's what is it going to be and how bad is it going to be? Just, just you know, another one of the problems of the mass production of vinyl records. But anyway, music is pretty good. Uh, I don't know that I really needed to pay you know twenty three dollars to have it on vinyl. I don't know when I'm going to listen to it again. Uh, so, is it good? Yes. Should I have bought it? I don't know. I think it is a situation where I, I probably just should have got the CD and that would have been fine. But, uh, of course, if you do love Mugwire, then, then check this out for yourself. Uh, this I've been waiting for, it seems like, at least three years since I knew it was happening. Maybe even just a little bit longer. Uh, it's the new EP from the Mercury program. It's called New Myths. And, uh, yeah, I knew that they were recording this several years ago. And then probably at least two years ago, they said that they were mixing it. And then I didn't hear anything else for such a long time. I'm wondering, when is this thing going to come out? I mean, it can't take that long to mix an EP. Uh, I don't know what took so long, um, but it, it is finally out. And it's on Love It Records. And there was a white pressing available. I think that sold out. I opted for the black. And now this is another case where quality can be had for a decent price. And in this case, a really decent price. Uh, $12, you can get this on their Bandcamp page, which I will share. Uh, for excellent music, they are instrumental, progressive, post-rock. Uh, they, a, a bit of math rock in there too. Uh, they just have a really cool sound. Uh, that, uh, I really come to them for and I really don't find anywhere else. Uh, great rhythms, great textures, uh, really great use of delayed guitar to create a soundscape, some ambient vibe. Uh, it's just really something you got to hear, and they do it, they do it so well. Uh, they've been around for a while. This is their first release uh, since 2009, so it's been a long time coming. I wish it was more of an album. They're not a, they're not a constantly active band. Uh, they didn't do much for a while. I think they played shows now and again. Then they finally got back together and started piecing this together. And it's really good. I love it. There's only six songs. But uh, it is pressed at quality record pressing, which they intend to be kind of an audiophile pressing plant. I believe it's owned by Acoustic Sounds, which is an audiophile store. Uh, website selling records and turntables and all that. They, I've had a mixed bag, mixed results with their pressings. Uh, actually, the first copy that I got of this wasn't too pleased with. Uh, there was a almost constant static, glitchy static. Uh, it was on the right channel, uh, and it was enough to be pretty distracting and then I had to even though it was 12 bucks I was like I emailed the the label and I was like this is pretty bad uh I'm hoping you can do something about it you know they questioned my setup and whatnot and I said it's definitely not my setup I listened to a lot of records on this setup just the way it is and this is definitely something wrong with the record so they had me send it back and they sent me a replacement and actually, and I was waiting. I waited a couple of weeks, and I said, uh, "Any word on your opinion of the record I sent you or the replacement?" And he said, "Oh, it looks like the tracking says it just got stuck somewhere. It hasn't moved, so I'll send another one." So I sent another one. Another one. Uh, sent a priority even. So I finally got that back, and it was much better. So twelve bucks, uh, definitely worth it. And to be done at a pressing plant that's, I'm sure, more expensive to use than United or Rainbow or whatever, and to still be able to sell it 
at $12. Again, it can be done. So check out the Mercury program. This is their latest release. They also did a reissue of the EP before that, Che Viking, uh, which is another great, great record. Uh, and this is on uh, 300 copies on Coke Bottle Clear. And since this is also only $12, I got it just because. And now when I was at that record store in the suburbs, I had another great score. Actually, one of the best scores that I've had in quite some time. So the Mercury Program, they're not a big band. Um, they're not all that well known. But since I started collecting records, I wanted their uh, album, A Day to Learn the Language. It came out in 2002. And uh, I, I've never seen it in a store. I've never seen it for less than $80 online. Usually it's more than that. I think the most recent one sold for like 160 So I didn't really have much hope in getting an original copy. It is meant to be reissued at some point soon. I think they're working on that. But uh, what I was going to say is I normally when I go to a record store, especially when I haven't been to in a while, I'll just look in the section just in case. There's like a mental list in my head of what if they did have this that I've been looking for forever and I'll just look, not expecting to see anything. I looked and there it was. This record that I've been looking for for seven years. Really couldn't believe it. Uh, not in perfect shape by any means. Uh, it's a double LP in a single jacket. There's a flap I'm not going to take it out, but there's, it opens, this flap opens from the inside of the record. It's a tab, and it says there's 2,000 pressed, and I think it says 1,000 uh, numbered with a poster, which is not this. Uh, but that flap was torn in a few places, and there's some shelfware, and the records were pretty dirty, but I didn't see much in the way of scratches and whatnot, and it was priced at $30. So I had to get it. Uh, I, there's no way I could not get this record. So I did, and thankfully I had the use of that VPI, and it cleaned up very nicely. Uh, there is some surface noise, definitely not overwhelming. Uh, I definitely took it up a grade or two even with cleaning it. Uh, it looks pretty nice. So cool to have this on vinyl. Now, uh, another huge grail to cross off the list. And it sounded quite good. Uh, it was interesting, though, between the first and second track, which are meant to flow into each other, there's a couple second gap. I'm not sure what happened there. But, uh, like I said, this is meant to be reissued, and I'll, I'll get that again for sure. Uh, but to, this is a huge score for me. But not only that... Right there with it was the EP that came out uh, the year before. All the suits began to fall off, which I wasn't even looking for because I didn't think I would ever get it. Um, there was 700 pressed of this and uh, 220 on a mix of black and gold, which is what this is. This is out of 220 copies, and there it was for 15 bucks. And because it's colored, it was harder to see uh, just how what the condition was. It seemed about the same. Uh, there was some some dirt, obviously, or dust rather. Uh, but it looked okay. It looks good enough. I mean, it is a pretty interesting looking. It's kind of an amber color, I would say. And uh, I cleaned it up, and it seemed to look pretty good. But uh, there's definitely more noise on this than on the, the album, which, which is fine. It, it was at times a little like, ugh, I wish it didn't sound like that, but uh, 15 bucks. This has never even been sold on Discogs because it's so rare. Uh, so I don't know what the, the value of it is, but it is certainly more than $15. So to score this as well, Pretty unbelievable. I couldn't believe they were still there. 
I don't know how, how long they had been there, but man, I'm really glad that I went to that store. And I hadn't even really listened to this in quite some time, and I forgot how great it is. This is more just fantastic, progressive, post-rock kind of music. Uh, I really enjoyed listening to these this recording again. So, uh, pretty unbelievable score for me. Uh, I was I was pretty pleased. Stuff like that is really what you hope for as a a record collector and a, a crate digger. When you find that thing that you've been looking for, it's pretty awesome. So I I believe there is another handful of records that uh, I just haven't shown uh, since I gotten them over the last several months but I think that's enough for today so hopefully it won't be too long until I make another one uh, no promises though but I'll be back sometime soon I uh, appreciate you watching subscribing, commenting all that good stuff uh, so take care and until next time enjoy your music